Hi everyone, today I have a really simple DIY baby shower game. Uh, this is a great game to play uh, while guests are arriving. You can have it out on a table or you can do it while people are all gathered together in one room. Um, and you can use buttons like I have or you can use candies. Uh, let me get started by showing you everything that I've used to make this craft. So the first thing that you need is a jar. Now this one came from uh, Target and was just in the front section, that dollar section. And um, it already had a little tag on it, which was nice, um, with a really cute little, um, uh, just a, not ribbon, but a thread around it. And it was obviously uh, for Halloween, and they're showing it filled with candy here. Um, that would be a great idea, though it is quite a small jar. I thought that buttons would be better. So the next thing you need is something to fill your jar and I uh, picked up a button set from the dollar store. You can see it was just $1.25 and uh, it's great filled with different sizes of buttons which makes it more difficult to guess how many are inside. Now you will need a second jar or box so that everyone can put their guesses in when they are guessing how many buttons or candies are in the jar. As far as craft materials, I'm using three different colors of cardstock. I'm going with teal, white, and a pop of red. Uh, I am using again this craft punch that I really love from the Martha Stewart collection. Uh, you'll need a ruler, um, that is a silver marker, a black marker, a pencil, uh, scissors, some glue tape, and a measuring tape. That is a little ball of twine in case the um, little uh, a jar that you bought does not have a twine around it already. So the first thing you need to do is fill up your container. Um, now you want to make sure you know the answer um, to how many buttons are in the jar. So on the inside lid I've put a circle with the uh, number there. Um, now you can do whatever rules you'd like. Um, the way I'm going to do it is closest guess without going over. Um, this is just attached to that tag that was already on the little jar. Um, so I used my craft punch here to get that shape. And uh, you'll see here I punched out of the teal and as well punched out the white circle using the inner part of this and just use my uh, glue tape to attach both of those. Now I'm going to decorate the jar where the gases are going to go into. I'm going to take my tape measure and then I just want to measure around to see how um, long I need to make the little um, decoration that's going to go on the outside. So I've gone ahead and cut out two pieces of cardstock. The teal I've done in a one inch strip and it goes to an eight and a half inch length, which is what I needed for around that little jug. And then the second one is a three quarter inch uh, strip. So I'm just gonna put glue tape along the white piece to attach it to the teal. So the two pieces are glued together and I'm just going to put it around here to measure um, how much I have. I have a very small amount here just to join the two of them up and I'm going to just glue that right on. Now you want to make sure you put a lot of glue on the seam here so it doesn't come undone and there is the first step for this part. So since the theme for this uh, shower is vintage airplanes, I'd like to put a little a detail airplane on um, the jar here. So this is just something that I drew up myself and um, using loose leaf was easier because I could use the lines to kind of guide and make sure everything was even. And then I did a little fold in half um, just to make sure that the uh, wings of the plane were the same. Now I'm going to take this and trace it onto my cardstock. So this is where the uh, silver came in handy. Uh, because I just made it out of loose leaf, it wasn't a uh, very thick template. So I just laid the airplane onto here and then colored right over top of it in that silver marker so then I could just cut it out. And of course this is the back side um, of the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. So here's the airplane all cut out. I've actually also cut out a little cloud. The top of the container here is quite 
um, not dirty, but just a little bit weathered looking. So I'm going to cover it up with a piece of teal and a little cloud on the top. And I'm gonna hide my seam on here with a little airplane. So I'm gonna glue those on and then I'll show you what they look like. So I just took the lid off and I just traced out a circle here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. So glue tape's on the back and then I'm gonna stick it right in the center here. And I'm gonna grab the uh, little cloud and put that on as well. So I just cut that out of the white and we'll just put that little floaty cloud right in the middle. And there we are. So I'm just gonna put that back on the uh, little um, thing of buttons. So while I was filming, I decided it would be really nice to have a little airplane sitting on the top here. Um, so I'm not gonna cut out a tiny little airplane in red because it'd be quite tedious. So I'm gonna use this ribbon that I've purchased from Michaels um, that has little airplanes on it and I cut a red one out. Now I'm gonna use the technique that I've used um, in previous videos. So I've cut this out and you can see my finger's a little shiny and that's because I'm using uh, nail polish, just a clear one to put on the edges of this so that it does not fray. So you can um, do it from the back and you're just gonna put that nail polish all along the edge, otherwise this whole thing would fray. So I'm gonna put that aside to dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna use my white cardstock and punch out um, some little shapes here so that people can write their guesses on it. So when I'm using this, I'm gonna uh, keep it on the setting for the full punch out. I like to turn it to the back and that way I can wash as I feed it in and see that I don't have any gaps. So there. and you'll see that it punched out a perfect little shape. And there they all are, are all punched out. At this point, you could either leave them blank or you could use a fine tip marker and write name and guess on them. That'll just remind them to put their name on their guess of how many buttons there are. So my little airplane is now dry. I'm gonna use some white glue to attach the little airplane to the top of this. Now the final step is to write a message on here and you wanna tell the guests what you're looking for. So guess the number without going over. Uh, and I did that in pencil first and I'm gonna go over top of it with my fine tip uh, black marker. So I actually changed my mind and used a permanent marker instead. This way I could go back in with a white eraser and get rid of all the little pencil marks that I could see. So I really like how all the little um, pieces look without writing on them. So what I'm gonna do is use this one as an example to have just sitting beside here so people know uh, or are reminded to write their name on it. Um, so I've just taken a piece of cardstock here um, and it is just one inch by two and a half. And I'm going to just fold that in half and then glue this right on it so that it can sit right beside there. And just in case so people don't take this one and use it on the back, I've written an example. So that is gonna sit right beside there. So we have everything completed now. Um, the little jar that says, guess the number without going over and the airplane. This has how many buttons, with the little design on the top there. And then we have all the punch outs. So it's a really easy setup when you're doing it on a table. That is all you need. And I hope you enjoyed this craft.